generally speaking, stratifying your data in Excel can be a bit difficult. However, we're going to show two techniques that should make it easy for you to stratify your data. The first technique utilizes a if statement. And the if statement can get a little hard to read and understand. However, what's essentially happening here is that the amount field is viewed first looking at the, the largest amount, the thousand dollars in this case, and if so, it's over a thousand. If not, then it goes to the next one and says, you know, is it over a hundred dollars? And then if not, you know, etc. And we, we've just come up with three strata to keep it very simple, and you want to start from the highest to the lowest and go to the matching item. So let's take a look at this technique in Excel. So taking a look at this formula, we have the equal if formula going to B2, which is the amount field, and then taking a look, you know, is it over a thousand, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to want to copy that program uh, verbatim, and I would suggest not going more than five strata. There is a point where memory starts to take hold. Uh, so I, I would say that don't go more than five. I've used three in this case just to keep it uh, relatively simple, yet you might want to go to more. So now that I've built that stratification, what we can then do is go over to the stratify pivot. And in this pivot, we've already included the strata field within the row label area. And we also have up top the years and months so that we've, we've actually stratified in this case by that level. And in the below, we then have the various sum fields of, of the count during that time. So let me just kind of go to the stratify chart. And in the stratify chart, you can start to see levels of activity or certain months where in, in certain you know, pockets of areas, there is a very large trend upward or downward for that month in comparison to other months. So heading back to the stratify pivot table, again, in this case, we've, we've really just selected that field in this pivot, we're going to get rid of, I'm going to keep the years field because I find that interesting. And I'm just going to take away the kind of the months field in that case. We, we grouped on that field on months and here we now have it by year. So let's take a look now at this dynamic chart. And really again, the, the, what's fantastic about pivot tables is the ability to go back and forth between the stratify and, st and stratify chart, in this case, the pivot table and the chart and be able to see the, the wide variations. Now, I didn't realize that in 2010 that it had so much activity in relation to 11 and 9. I mean, when I looked at it monthly, it was sort of hard to, to see that. But, but now that I'm looking at it by year, it, it's very apparent uh, across the board. So now we, that we understand how to use the stratify in our pivot table, we're going to go back into our payables data and I've added a new column using a VLOOKUP function. And that VLOOKUP is taking a look at this table over here. And what I do is I, I set up two, and, and actually, first off, I need to note that Charlie Walker at TopCats uh, provided this idea. And I, I do thank him for this because it was a, a much better way of doing your stratifications. And it does allow you a lot more limit. I mean, you could go a lot more in strata than the five or so that, that you'll want to put into this if statement. So it's a much better way of doing it. It's just a little bit tricky. So you need to, to watch out. What you want to do is set your first value as the lowest possible value in your data file and you know call that zero and under because essentially what the system is going to do is take a look at that limit and go anything above that limit until it hits the next number and then it's going to look at that so again i've i've kept everything in the zero and under and the, the minus 5000 don't know if i really need the zero and under here but but i put it in there for safety's sake and then i put a penny onwards and then anything over a penny it's going to consider up to it hits $100, and then it's going to do the same to 1000 
2,000 and 5,000. Now, I know that, that I don't have anything over $5,000 uh, in my data file, uh, but if I did, everything would fall into this category here, 5,000 and over, because it would look at that lower limit and then kind of work upwards from there, and that's the last one, so there, there's nothing else to do. Th this is a way better way to do it. Let's take a look at the VLOOKUP function. This is kind of my table that I'm using and I'm going to click on the insert function button so that I can take a look at the data. So the lookup value is B2 which is this amount field here. That field does not have the actual uh, dollar signs around it and that is where we use the table array. Now the reason we're putting dollar signs around it is to fix that value and what you can do is, is enter the dollar signs yourself or uh, what you can do is select F4. So let me just highlight this. So imagine I'm, I've just highlighted that uh, Q through R11. I can hit my F4 button and it will automatically bring in that information. And then I can close that. Now I want to carry over whenever there's a kind of a match in column Q I want to write what is in column 2, which is R in this case, so you put column 2. Now the, the, the strangeness, or the thing that I normally don't do with VLOOKUP, is use the TRUE statement. Now the TRUE statement will actually look more for a close approximate match, as opposed to a perfect match. A, a false would be a perfect match, and that's really good when you're doing matches on, say, vendor number between files. You know, you want a perfect match. But with true, you can actually get more of a close match, and that's how it's doing this stratification using the VLOOKUP. Again, much better way of doing it, a lot easier to set up, and then edit. Click OK, and I can now, uh, again, I copied this formula down in this sample data set that, that you'll be able to download as well. And after copying it down, I can go back over to my stratify chart. Now, in, in the Stratify pivot, I notice that I have a strata and a strata VLOOKUP. I'm going to click on strata VLOOKUP and deselect the strata just to kind of get back. And it gives me a little more flavor, I guess, of, of what's happening you know, in the data itself. And we're able to kind of see uh, more so uh, than we were able to see with just the three categories if we didn't need to drill down on say some of the larger items I, I just see this uh, you know large uh, year and, and value of of course you can double click on that and that will bring up that uh, column notice everything here is over five thousand dollars and I'm, I'm looking column B in this case and, and everything is, is over the five thousand mark now I feel that the stratify feature brings into play the, the ability to then filter out what you may want to look at or not look at. But instead of looking at it in a yearly fashion like we're doing right now, I'd rather bring into to play some of some more information. So let's bring the enterer field in as, as who's entering what and when. And you know on average people should be entering in a very standardized set of, of amounts over time and, and should not have uh, a lot of uh, uh, variation. Now going over to the Stratify chart, you can quickly see who is entering things from a, uh, a Strata perspective. Now this is one thing where scale comes into play in my opinion when you look at these charts where sometimes it's hard to see some of the variations. So what I like to do, you know, be it, you know, we could even change this chart if, if you'd like, but I think we could do it with just the area chart going back to the stratify I can filter out each bucket on its own and just kind of take a look at you know where are those pockets uh, of, of change within just the enter and the stratify lookup and by doing this you know taking each one on its own even though again this is only seventy five thousand dollars on millions you can start to maybe see where are those uh, pockets uh, coming up more uh, where people are are doing uh, more activity in that range. So as we then take a look at this I want to now add a little more complexity and what we're going to do we have the enter 
So we have who, we have kind of what from a, a, a value point of view. And then what I'd like to add to this in this case is the years function which we had calculated previously. Now if you don't have the years function and you, you want to select the invoice date field, again uh, this can, can make it a little confusing, you can then right click and then say you know group or ungroup and you can decide do you want months or years or quarters. Uh, well, just to keep it interesting, we'll select quarters for, for this one. And uh, then we have the various quarters of the year where activity is posted. And, and again, looking at accounts payable data, a quarterly analysis can be very useful because a lot of times you find pockets of, of spend that happen within more, you know, times where we have more business as, as a business. So let's go back to that stratified chart now. Again, a little more interesting to look at in that not only do we have the strata, but we also are looking at certain quarters now and saying to ourselves, yeah, you know, why in the fourth quarter, and let's let's just take a look at the zero and under on its own because it's it's easier to do it this way. And and just looking at this uh, function here, you can start to very quickly highlight and and get a sense for okay, that's about three hundred and seventy-seven thousand uh, dollars being posted in the fourth quarter as a negative, and and that is very strange because the person throughout the quarters one and two and then three they had nothing uh, activity-wise, and I'm looking at the green KD in this case. Again, this could be done across all of the strata, but we just wanted to show you that one just so that you can get an idea. But you see how scale plays a, a part in it, but also how it is interesting to do more of, of this two or three layered type area graphing because you can start to see pockets of time that look strange for a person in an amount category. So you're, you're taking this Rubik's Cube of data and turning it in three directions at the same time, which is very, very useful from an analysis point of view.